Hi, I'm James Wynn. Most people know me as the director and creator of the film Birdemic, which is one of the earliest films to raise the alarm about the harms of climate change and global warming. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, climate change, global warming. At present, we are experiencing a climate emergency. I mean, the extreme weather, the endless wildfire all over the world, in America, in Europe, in Asia, uh, the, the, the endless floods, the heat wave, the drought, uh, an extreme storm, the hurricane and monsoon and typhoon. And many people are dying because of the wildfire, the floods, because uh, that is caused by climate change, global warming. So, uh, and there has been, uh, you know, effort to mitigate climate change, uh, such as uh, uh, renew renewable energy, solar power, uh, solar panel, electric car, um, wind power, and that's great. I'm all for this uh, uh, mitigation effort. And there is the adaptation effort. Uh, I mean, I mean, using less energy, less resources, less water, uh, you know, reduce your, uh, your carbon footprint. And that's great, I'm all for that too. And last year at the, the COP27, uh, the United Nations uh, Conference on Climate Change, uh, there was an effort to uh, give a few billion dollars to poor country uh, to uh, uh, compensate them for the, uh, the harms of climate change. And, and that's great. But my point here is now is that even if all nations uh, achieve net zero, net zero CO2 emission, it will not fix this climate crisis uh, because right now, up in the atmosphere right now, there are about 2.4 trillion ton of CO2 that's been emitted since uh, industrial civilization uh, of 1750 and the CO2 really ex accelerated uh, in 1950. This massive amount of CO2 up there right now is the main cause of why uh, the, uh, it's heating up the planet exponentially and, and it's the main cause of extreme weather and all the craziness that we've seen so far. So can climate change warming be fixed? I believe that it can. I have a plan. My plan is a daring and innovative. It may sound science fiction, a dream, or maybe even a big what if, but it's based on real technology that exists today and it's called Climate Fix. So now let me show you how it works. So let me show you, explain to you how Climate Fix works. The first thing we gotta do is remove two trillion ton of CO2 up there, or at least a trillion ton within the next 10 years. And by using uh, direct air capture technology. And the reason we have to do it within the next 10 years is because it's just the level is just too high right now this thing called the, uh, the PPM, the parts per million, it's, it's a measurement that uh, it's a gauge that scientists, climate scientists use to measure the level, the amount of level of CO2 in the atmosphere. And right now it, it's at 420 PPM, which is extremely high. Uh, normal uh, PPM, pre-industrial civilization, it's, it's less than 300 uh, PPM. It, it's, it's the garden of eating, uh, the garden of paradise, the, no, the normal weather. Uh, okay, but since industrial civilization, since then, and it really accelerated in 1950, it has gone up extremely high to, to uh, 420. Uh, the max you can go over really without, you know, causing harm is 350. Uh, it, it, it's livable. But right now, it's at 420 ppm, and it's increased uh, 2 ppm per year. That's about 50 billion ton of emission every year you know, of every everyone, industrial civilization right now. And it's, uh, so just simply do the math. Two times 10, that's another 20 ppm 10 years from now. We're at 420, we'll be at 440, 450, uh, uh, you know, a little more than 10 years. And, uh, and, at, and anything over 450 ppm, it's called the extinction zone. Uh, it'd be so hot. And inhabitable. So we need to remove at least 100 to 200 billion ton per year in the next 10 year. So 10 years from now, uh, if we remove a trillion to two trillion tons, we'll get back to normal weather. So that's why we only have 10 years, in my opinion, 
to fix this uh, and we can remove this using direct air capture technology. The third thing we, are, we have to do is that the policy maker, the people in power, our nation, the United Nations, has to get together and create uh, a climate fix fund to do and donate the, you know, a few trillion into this fund and to pay these uh, carbon removal startup like Climework to remove uh, and pay them, contract them to remove the CO2 uh, from the atmosphere. Uh, and this fund can be managed by the United Nations. So let me go in detail on how direct air capture technology work, works uh, by example of uh, this, this, this startup called Climeworks. So let me sh show you how uh, uh, direct air capture technology works. Uh, this is Orica. It's a direct air capture machine designed by Climeworks. And uh, what it does is that it brings the air uh, in and removes the CO2 from the air and, and sequesters the underground. Um, and the max it can uh, remove per year is about 4,000 tons. What I like about uh, Climeworks Orca is that it works. You know, it, the technology uh, works. It removes the CO2 from the air from the, and sequester underground. You know, in Silicon Valley, we call it a, a proof of concept, okay? And that's what I like about it. Also, uh, it uses renewable energy, uh, geothermal. Uh, I think for in Iceland, the, uh, this machine is located in Iceland where they have geothermal renewable energy to, to power this machine. It, so it's non-polluting. Uh, that's what I like about it. What I think that needs improvement, I think the cons uh, uh, of, of Orca is that the, the thing is that uh, it, it costs just about $1,100 to remove a ton of CO2. That, that is just simply too, uh, too high. It need, it, it, the cost needs to be bring down to about $100 or less uh, uh, in order to achieve this goal of, of removing billions of tons per year of CO2 from the Earth atmosphere. Uh, and I, I believe that with competition, many other stuff like Orca, the better technology, that the price will go down drastically uh, uh, and that uh, so that we can implement of removing uh, billions of tons of CO2 per year. And this, this machine, I think it, the, the max it can remove per year right now is uh, 4,000 tons per year. Um, and that's not enough. Well, we need to remove billions, you know. So, and also we need hundreds of thousands of machines like this all over the world, uh, you know, working 24 by, si uh, by 7 to suck the CO2 out from the, from the Earth's atmosphere and sequester underground. In order to uh, successfully remove uh, billions of tons per year of CO2 from the Earth's atmosphere, we need hundreds of thousands of this type of machine. And hopefully with competition, uh, uh, better technology, each of these machines will be cheaper to build uh, and, and uh, use less energy to implement, uh, to uh, remove a ton of CO2. Now, I want to talk to our climate scientist and ecologist, my friend, Dr. Guy McPherson. Dr. McPherson is one of the earliest climate scientists to raise the alarm about the harms of climate change, global warming. He had risked his reputation and academic career to do this. Dr. McPherson has lived his life like that famous statement from the Greek philosopher, Socrates, that the unexamined life is not worth living.
fully aware of it uh, up in the atmosphere right now since the Industrial Revolution, 1750. There's uh, there's about uh, two to three trillion ton of CO2. You know, about two trillion of that. That's it's it's man cost e emission, and maybe a trillion of that is natural. Okay, but just estimate two to three trillion ton of CO2 up in the Earth atmosphere right now, and it's heating the planet up exponentially. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see all this crazy weather, extreme weather, droughts, wa endless wildfire, mm -hmm. uh, crazy storm, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, you know this this document its main uh, mission uh, thesis is climate fix and what and what my plan uh, uh, proposal is to, uh, perhaps use a technology or uh, what uh, carbon removal technology you know what if there's a big what if because I'm from Silicon Valley and we and what if uh, we can use the carbon removal technology to remove at least a trillion ton ideally two trillion ton up there mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you think that when that's done, that uh, the uh, the weather will be cooler again? And back to the uh, uh, normal, the normal weather we we are used to. Right. Yes, but we still have to change the way we live, or we'll be right back here again. Yes. You know, if we don't change the way we live as a society, then we're going to be right back to a climate crisis in another few years. Yes. We not only have to provide the immediate fix. We also have to do the work of changing the way we live. Yes, yes, and, and that's that's mitigation, and that's right. that's happening as as we right. speak. Uh, you know, we're, we're you know the mitigation, the adaptation. That's 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 great, and even right. the reparation. But uh, it's uh, it's it's great. But the, my point here uh, is that it's not going to fix anything. Right. The plan every year they go. There's the COP, uh, the COP reference. Uh, there's the 28th year of it. Uh, everybody, uh, it's great all this agenda and, and uh, effort, but at the end, what's missing is the climate fix uh, agenda, and it, uh, the planets keep on heating, uh, heating up, and the, the, the cancer, you mentioned the cancer, the cancer is right now two, three trillion ton up there, right. that has at least a trillion has to be removed, right. and so we have to remove, in my opinion, at least 100 to 200 billion ton per year, mm -hmm. so just do the math. Uh, the next 10 years, that'd be uh, two trillion. It depends on if you remove 100 billion or 200 billion. Right. If we, if that's done, do you think seriously that we'll we'll get back to normal weather? The weather, the the Garden of Paradise, the Garden of Eden. Yes, absolutely. It's it's within our grasp. If yeah. we if we produce an atmosphere that was like the atmosphere the in, in the yes in the early 1700s, yeah. for example then yes, we, the, the weather weirding will go away. We will not have these horrible events, the flooding and the droughts and the starvation of people. All that is going to be made better. The reason I made this documentary called Climate Fix is because I want to appeal to the, to the policymakers, the people in power, and to all nations and the United Nations to implement Climate Fix. And we have to do this as soon as possible, else it will be, like we say in the movie business, the end. The end of civilization in a very short time. So let us implement climate fix so that we get back the normal weather again, the garden of paradise. Thank you.